Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back on the EJ253 out of the 2007 uh, Outback 2.5i Limited SUS. As you can see, we've basically got it back together at this point. We've got the heads on, got all the new sills and gaskets in it, got the timing set back on. What we're gonna do today is adjust the valves. I know a lot of people have asked for this video in the past and it hasn't really been convenient for me to film it in the past, so we might as well go ahead and do it now. Anytime that you do a head gasket replacement, remove the cylinder heads, remove the rocker arms, or do anything in that area, it's always a good uh, practice to go through and adjust the valves, or at least check the valves, uh, to make sure you're still within specification. Uh, so we're going to go through that procedure now. Alright guys, so there's only a few tools you actually need to do this job. One is a crankshaft turning socket, or a 22 millimeter if you put the crank bolt back in, flathead screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench, set of feeler gauges. Now, that's if you're on the engine stand like I am. If you're doing it in the car, there's a little bit more involved. You've gotta remove the timing cover, remove the rocker covers. We've covered that in previous videos. I'll try to link it in the top corner. So a lot of people ask about these arrows. I'm gonna get a zoomed in picture for you. Uh, but these arrows on the cam pulleys, and I've had a lot of people that have messaged me uh, about doing the timing belt and mistakenly think that is the timing mark. The timing marker are actually these notches, these small notches in the cam gears that allow with the notches and the timing cover. Uh, these arrows are for uh, showing you where your pistons are at top dead center for adjusting your valves. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the engine until both arrows are pointing straight up at the 12 o'clock position. That will let us bring cylinder one up onto top dead center on compression and we can adjust those valves. So basically you wanna get those arrows pointed directly up at the 12, 12 o'clock position, pointing at your timing mark and your timing cover. Again, I'll get a close up picture on the screen for you as uh, it's a little difficult to see in here in the building. So if both of the arrows pointed at the 12 o'clock position, pointed at our timing marks, we know that number one cylinder is at top dead center on the compression stroke. So going over here, we should feel that all the rocker arms are slightly loose and we can go through and adjust cylinder one's intake and exhaust valves. Uh, once we have adjusted that, we'll turn our crankshaft 180 degrees, then we can do cylinder number three. We'll do another 180, we can do cylinder number two, another 180, and we can do cylinder number four, and we're done with the valve adjustment. So the specifications for your intake valves are 0 0.20 plus or minus 0 0.04 millimeters. I'll put the specs on the screen for you. And your exhaust valves are to be set to 0 0.25 millimeters uh, plus or minus 0 0.04. And again, those specs will be on the screen. Now we've got everything set up. Let's go ahead and move the camera over here and adjust the valves on cylinder one. And we'll go through the rest of the other three cylinders. All right, so here we are at our number one cylinder. These are our two intakes and our two exhausts. They share one common rocker shaft. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and check our specifications. As I said before, should have a little bit of wiggle. Don't mind the engine wiggling on the stand. You might be able to hear that. Loose here, loose on this one. This one's a little tight, so we're gonna need to most likely adjust that one. And uh, we might need to tighten these two up. They might be a little loose. Our spec on our intake is 0 0.2 plus or minus 0 0.04. Uh, so we've got a 0 0.20 and a 0 0.22 filler gauge. We're gonna set it to 
point to O, and we're going to make sure that the point to 2 does not go underneath uh, while the point to O goes through with a slight drag on it. So we're just going to check right now, see where we're at. Little loose, just a slight drag on the point to O. Let's try the point to 2. It slides through with a little bit more drag, so this is a little bit loose. We need to tighten it up. Let's try our other intake valve. Which is way too tight. We can't get our 0 0.2 in there. So what we're going to do on that is we're going to take our 10 millimeter wrench. We're going to break loose the jam nut. take our flathead screwdriver and tighten or loosen that up to get the clearance we need. Check it again with the feeler gauges and snug down that 10 millimeter jam nut. A little bit of drag on there. Let's see if the point two two will go under. It just barely goes under. Might need to tighten that up just a smidge. Feels good right there. So we will hold that in place and then tighten up our outer 10 mil gem nut. Again, double check that. After we're done. All right, we've got our intake valves adjusted exactly the way I want them. So, point two slides under with substantial. Well, not substantial, but a good amount of drag. Point two two will not fit under. So uh, intakes are set, like I said, just the way I want them. They feel right about like I like to fill them. Uh, a lot of this is uh, experience and going from the feel of it, getting a knack of uh, tight or too tight. This is the go no go method where you set, uh, you get two filler gauges. One is where you want it, and one is just a hair above where you want it. You want this one to go and this one to no-go, and that's why they call it the go-no-go -no -go method uh, for adjusting a valve or a clearance. So our exhaust is a 0.25 plus or minus 0 0.04. So we'll go ahead and adjust that now and uh, get done with cylinder one. Then we can repeat this process three more times for the remaining cylinders. So we got 0 0.25, plus or minus 4 will be 0 0.29. All right, so again, 0.25, tight on this side, uh, not as tight on this side. I got our 0.27, which should not go. Barely get it to go under this side. Got to kind of force it this side goes pretty easily. So we're going to need to tighten both of these up just a smidge. So again, we'll take our wrench and break them loose. 
and take our screwdriver and tighten it down just a hair. Let's check that. So point two seven is what we want to no go, and point two five we want to go. Point two five quite tight, maybe a little too much. Still a little loose over on this side. Still a little loose. About right on this side actually. And uh, 0.27, no go. And go, so we need to tighten this one up a little bit more. Let's see how that goes. All right, 0.25. Slides in. Slides in with some drag. 0.27. No go. And no go. So we are set. Number one cylinder is set exactly the way we want it. As I said before, now we can go to cylinder three, which is the next door neighbor. And then we can go around and hit two and four, which is the front and the back. Okay, now that number one is adjusted the way we want, we will turn the crank 180 degrees and that will put number three in position for this adjustment. Once you've turned 180 degrees, your arrow should point to three o'clock or a 90 degree angle from where they were at at the 12 o'clock position. Now cylinder three should be top dead center on the compression stroke and you can adjust the intake and exhaust valves. Same as we did earlier. And no go. All right, so cylinder one and three are set. Flip over to the other side and do two and four. All right, spun the crank 180 again. So we can now adjust number two.
All right, one last 180 degree rotation for cylinder four. All right, guys, and all four of our cylinders valves are now adjusted. What I'd like to do is go ahead and crank the engine over a couple rotations, set number one back to top dead center on the compression, check it again with the feeler gauges, make sure everything's still good, then spin at 180, check cylinder three, spin 180, number two, spin 180, number four. If all that checks out, you're good to go ahead and put the rocker covers back on and uh, reassemble the engine and put it back in the car or, you know, if you're doing it in car, I feel for you. It is quite the undertaking to do in car, but it is possible to do. Uh, but that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.